I've become a really wonderful coach. The hours I've put into coaching people is a big part of that. But a huge part of that came from the decisions I made in my life before I became a coach. Every time I quit a job that was really safe for me, right? Every time I negotiated my pay, every time I had a tough conversation with my spouse, right? Like those are the things that really build up skill in terms of like these life skills that help me as a coach. So first, I want you to recognize whatever type of coaching you're interested in doing, like your number one job is to start building massive belief in yourself and the skills that you have. Because if you go out there and you try to help people and it's okay if you're not a hundred percent sure, but if you are going out there trying to sell something that doesn't feel a hundred percent authentic to you, that you can't even get behind yourself, it's going to be a very, very uncomfortable road. And I don't want you to go through that road and it doesn't have to be like that. You're listening to Yo Quiero Dinero, a personal finance podcast for the modern Latina. I'm your host, Janice Torres Rodriguez, personal finance expert, speaker, writer, and business coach. I teach women of color how to build wealth and gain financial independence through side hustles and investing. On this show, we're serving up POC-friendly personal finance knowledge, always with a side of sass. We're talking about how to make dinero, how to keep it, and how to make it grow. If you're ready to become poderosa with your dinero, you've come to the right place. Before we hop into today's conversation, I want to remind you to follow us on social. If you're loving this podcast and you want more community, you want to find out more about our events and all the stuff that we have going on behind the scenes, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, and everywhere else you love to hang out on the internet. If you're loving this podcast, please take a moment to leave us a review if you listen to us on Apple. It's the easiest way to share our podcast with people that you know and love, and it helps us get discovered by amazing listeners like you. So take a moment, leave us a review, share us with your friends and family, subscribe so that you never miss an episode, and make sure to check out our blog, YoQuieroDineroPodcast.com, where you can sign up for our email list and you'll never miss an episode. Plus, you get exclusive invitations to our live events, special discounts for our digital courses, and as always, our best personal finance tips and advice to help you be poderosa with your dinero. Thanks for listening. Now, let's get into the episode. Kat, welcome back to the podcast. I say welcome back because you are one of the elite people in my circle that I'm like, I must have her back because she's just such a fucking badass and we have so much to talk about. So thank you for being here. Love you. You know that. I love (laughs) what you have created, what you've built. I think everybody, even people who aren't in your circle, feel like you're their friend because that is the kind of transparency and just you're just raw, right? And you've always been this way from the beginning. I remember following you for the first time when I want to say you were at like 4,000 followers on Yo Quiero Dinero. And I was like at 2,000. And I was like, one day I'll be like, <laughs> and anyways, I love you. You know that I'm so grateful for you. You not only are a friend, but a mentor and someone I just look up to forever and ever and ever. Oh my gosh. Can you stop? Like, I, we're like two minutes in. You're going to make me fucking cry. This is not, dude, this is know, not oh, what we do here. Oh, you ain't <sighs> even ready. You ain't even ready because I got more. Thank you so much. I love you. And I'm in absolute awe of you and everything that you've been able to accomplish over this past year. And so I wanted to bring you on because when I think of like the epitome of a woman who is out here serving her community and get in the fucking bag in the process and doing it in a way that doesn't feel sleazy, doesn't feel exploitive, doesn't feel scammy, doesn't feel like so much of the bullshit that's on the internet. Mm -hmm. Like you are the bar. You are the bar that we should all aspire to. Okay. And I will say that till the cows come home because I truly believe what you're doing is amazing. So thank you. You were first on the ep- on the podcast on episode 60. So if y'all haven't heard that episode, please go back and check it out because it is a bomb. It's actually one of the highest rated episodes of that season. And if folks are encountering you for the first time, I'd love for you to just introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who you are. 
Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So my name is Catalina del Carmen, but on all channels, Instagram, Twitter, everywhere, I'm Cat Del Carmen, C A T D E L C A R, just in case. And I am a first gen Guatemalteca. I was raised by a single mom in the San Francisco Bay Area, born in San Francisco. And I always wanted to be an entrepreneur. I always wanted to be very rich and famous. And after high school, I got into college like a good little first gen daughter. If you listen to the first episode, I was on episode 60, I believe it was. I talk a little bit about this, but like I really struggled in school. It took me 10 years to finish. I had so much drive and passion, but the education system just wasn't for me. That being said, I graduated. I learned how to want something, really go for it and finish it. And that was a big lesson to me. I remember that. And after that, I really wanted to hustle and make money. I got into tech in the Bay Area. Tech is like where all the money's at. Got into tech. I made some decent money after a lot of ups and downs. And then I went all in to a coaching business a little differently than Janice because you waited a long time and made a whole lot of money before you left your job. I am a high risk kind of gal. And I left my job after making like literally a thousand dollars or something in my business, which I don't like, that's not the road for everyone, but it was the road for me. So I did that. I had quite a few months of struggling before I almost quit. And then I went really into my business in such a different way, selling high ticket coaching, which we're going to talk about today. And made 200 fucking thousand dollars in one year. Mind blowing emoji. Okay. So I learned a lot. I learned a lot. And now I help women of color coaches create more money in their business with sales and marketing. Okay. Fucking amazing. And this is exactly why I wanted to have you on this podcast, because for somebody who's been able to accomplish what you've accomplished in such a short amount of time, Right. It's like relatively short amount of time. You really started this in like 2020. For sure. sure. I must pick your brain because there's gems in there, clearly. Okay. So (laughs) first of all, let's take it all the way back. Right. I know you and me were both coaches. Mm -hmm. We did not grow up knowing what the fuck a coach was. Okay. Maybe there's some other communities who are like, yeah, coaching has been a thing since like 2005, like where you've been at. But for our community, this is still very new. And so first off, before we actually talk about like what it is, how did you come to the world of coaching? Like, well, here's the thing. I remember my older sister, she told me a long time ago that I should be a life coach. And she's like, it's like what Tony Robbins does. And I was probably like 25 or something. And even before that, people used to say I should be a motivational speaker. That's what they used to call them, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So my whole life, little comments, you should be a motivational speaker. I've always been that friend, right? That's like, you can fucking do it. Go for it. La, la, la. And It wasn't until I was really established in my career. So I actually worked in learning and development. That was my actual trade in tech, learning and development. And then I ended up selling learning and development to big enterprise companies. So sale, I had a background in training, learning, and sales. So it's not like crazy different, actually, from what I do now. But how it evolved was I wanted to be an entrepreneur never knew what I wanted to do. And I lived in this space of, I don't know what I want to do, but I know I'm not doing it. I lived in that for years. And I know you can relate to this. And when you are in that space, you, if you aren't, if you're listening to this and you're not trying new things, that's like a hundred percent what you need to be doing is trying new things. And what led me to actual coaching was I started a podcast in 2019 called, at that time it was called Follow That Fear. And this podcast I created and I said, this is going to turn into a freaking business if it's going to kill me. And I don't know how, I don't need to know the details, but I'm going to make this work. So I basically spent a whole year learning how to market, like really learning marketing. And I grew the podcast to, I think it was when it was like 10K downloads. That's when I officially was like, okay, I officially have something to teach thinking I didn't have other things to teach this whole time. Like I thought it needed to be like something very solid and whatever. 
So I created a course and I was really interested in digital marketing. So like more like if you guys are listening and are familiar with like Amy Porterfield, her line of business, it's similar to coaching. It is under the coaching umbrella, but I was really into Amy Porterfield, Jenna Kutcher. I mean, these are why I started my podcast too, because I was like, why is everyone white? And then also who's going to teach this shit to my community, right? And I know we both have that passion. Right. And that's why I started the podcast. And then literally, whose podcast did it? Somebody's podcast. It must have been Amy Porterfield. Somebody was like, all you need to do is say at the end of your podcast episode, if you want coaching, hit me up. No joke, Janice. <laughs> I literally think it was two episodes I put it on. And I literally was just like, hey, if you want any coaching, email this email and I will send you a rate sheet. And I literally just copied someone <laughs> else's podcast. No joke. Like probably two months later, I got two people reach out to me in one week. I freaked out. I was like, oh my God, I don't even have a rate sheet. Like, so I like created this rate sheet. I think I made it like one call was like 150 bucks. And then for four calls, you could get it for like 500 or something like that. And I remember I cried when someone bought like the four call package and I cried and I was like, oh my God, I'm going to make this into something. <laughs> it took me a long time after that to really make it into something. But that was the first time I kind of considered like I was like, okay, coaching, like this whole coach thing. I always was into Oprah. I always was into Tony Robbins. Oh my God, like I me too. loved personal growth. I mean, people like us, like coaches, we're coaches. Like we love personal growth. That is the business we love to be in. We love to help people grow. We love to grow, right? Like if you love personal growth, then this is probably an option for you. I don't know if it's the thing, but it definitely is an option. And then I started calling myself a podcast coach because that's the kind of coaches coaching I was selling. And that kind of just evolved. And I remember I created a group program called Show Up Real Once. And that was right after my course that I had created. And I got like six people to join that program. And I remember it was a thousand bucks or 900 bucks or something, which I was like so surprised. And I think it was like five of those six people would tell me, I want to be a coach like you. And that was when I was like, huh, okay. Like, and I was still figuring out my niche, y'all. Like, I think I went from podcasting coach to personal branding coach. That was my realization where I was like, okay, I'm going to teach them how to like become coaches. And that's kind of where the business coaching started. I started just putting an umbrella over it under business because I started to make money in my business and I was learning. Yeah. And then I got more into life coaching. And that was really when my business started to transform because mm. I started using like proper life coaching tools in my business coaching. And I was teaching less about how to and more of the personal growth side of having a business. Mm. And I only started teaching it like that when I started practicing it and started seeing major results. And yeah, I started working with people one on one for high ticket. It happened quickly after that. And I started helping a lot of folks working with a lot of amazing people. That's amazing. And I want folks to hear the journey, right? Like I think so many people get caught up in the idea that if they don't get it right the first time, then they're somehow a fucking failure. Like they're just not meant to do this. And I promise y'all like this journey into entrepreneurship is not a linear path. It's it not. is very much like trying shit, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't, giving yourself permission to play, experiment, be curious, fail, try again, mm -hmm. and get very uncomfortable. Like, oh, so uncomfortable. Oh, my God. I hate it so much. But <laughs> I was just at dinner with our friend, yeah. Erica Cruz. She's a badass, too. We were, I know. She's amazing. And we were just talking about our growth, right? And I know you could relate to this, too. Like even at the levels that you always dreamt of being, I was like, it feels like every time you hit a milestone, there is a new mountain that is even more intimidating than the last. 
And you literally start shivering in your boots and you're just like, okay, I guess I will do this again. It doesn't end. And it starts at that level in the beginning, right? Like it's easy for us to say like, okay, you have to try things out. You have to feel the failure. You have to go through all these things. But the reality too is it's easy to say that now for us, right? But when we were in the moment, what it felt like is this is not going to work out. Oh, I was convinced. It works out. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I'm going to end up living in a cardboard box. Yeah. Why did I quit my job? Nobody's going to fucking buy this. Everybody's going to realize I'm exactly. full of shit. <laughs> exactly. Like in the moment, it's really hard to convince yourself that it's going to continue working. Even here, y'all, like even at this moment, we're like, okay, this is going to work, right? Like yeah. everything else. Yeah. It's, it's a process. It is a process. And so I think let's dive into, you know, what coaching actually looks like on a practical level, right? For folks who maybe have never worked with a coach and how it can differ from something that I think maybe people are more familiar with, which is like a consultant. Yeah. How are they different? The way I think about consultants and coaches is consultants are folks who are going to really give you a plan and a layout off of their experience, either their own experience or their experience with clients, similar to coaching. It's not like coaching, you don't do that either. But consultants aren't there to like, help you like feel better, right? Or like, they're not there to help you understand the process deeply and like go through mind blocks, right? Like, a consultant's job isn't to like talk through limiting beliefs with you, right? That is not the kind of shit consultants do. I mean, maybe great ones do. That would be wonderful. But typically when you hire a consultant, you're looking for a roadmap. I want to get here. This is where I am now. Help me understand this type of business, understand this journey, whatever that journey looks like, right? And the way I think about a coach is I really, truly think of sports, Like I think of it as like a sports coach. When I think of a coach in sports, I think, okay, they're not playing. They're not playing in the actual game. Like you are playing in the game. The coach is there to support you. The coach is there to help you see what you can't see yourself. The coach is there to help evolve you and tells you the truth, right? Like I always think about like pro, pro athletes. I think about Kobe and I think about Serena Williams and I think about Steph Curry because I'm from the Bay. I think about these athletes and I'm like, imagine the kind of confidence you have to have as a coach to coach these brilliant Mm. people. Like they aren't going, I think of Serena Williams a lot. She hires a freaking coach. Okay. Her coach isn't there to like tell her, oh, I understand. Yeah, maybe you should take a break right now. I mean, nothing, nothing's wrong with breaks, but I'm just saying like a coach isn't there to tell you the things that all your people in your life are going to tell you, right? Your best friends are there to support you. And sure, they're going to call you out on something sometimes, but like they're not going to be invested in you like a coach. A coach is there to help you see what feels impossible. Your coach is there to also give you some type of roadmap sometimes too, right? Like definitely can be a part of the process. But I think a coach will help you much, much more with your mind and tell you the reality of what it really is to be on the other side of what you feel is so far. Yeah. I love that description. And it's really like, think about it. None of these elite athletes are out here like Googling how to train for the Olympics or fucking <laughs> make it to like the World Series yeah. or whatever. They're hiring it is. a freaking coach and they're hiring the best in the game. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> they're working with experts yeah. in their respective arenas that are helping them address their biggest areas that they need to improve. Exactly. So I think one of the things that can intimidate people about working with coaches is the self-realization that you have to have to realize like that you're the fucking problem. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So I know for me, I'm like, yo, it's taken me a long time to be like, you know what? You're going to procrastinate this shit if you don't hire somebody to help you. And that's okay. It's not a character flaw. That's just who you are. So how do we get over the shame or the the mind blocks we might have around even wanting or needing that help? Yeah. So here's the thing. First, I want folks to consider 
if you have a goal or if you desire for something future, even, and we could talk about all different types of coaches, right? There's like health coaches who are going to help you eat better. Like some coaches that are going to help you in your business. Some coaches are going to help you in all these different things. But the fact that you desire more, the fact that you want something different than your life is already something amazing. Like I think a lot of folks need to give themselves credit that like, you grew up in this life, you created whatever you have created so far in your life, and you still desire something that you don't have yet. That number one, like, I just want you to give yourself props for that, because that requires a whole level of awareness of yourself and a whole level of not only awareness of yourself, but also the world and what's possible. Like, you think something else is possible for you. And that's huge because so many people will live every single day thinking that their circumstance is their life and that's just the way life is. So the fact that you're even considering a coach or even thinking like, okay, I see what Janice is doing. I see what Kat's doing. Like there must be something for me. Like the fact that you're even there is a huge deal. Here's the thing. And I remember looking for a coach desperately and I really wanted a Latina coach. And now I'm like surrounded by them. But at the time, y'all, at the time, I could barely find anyone who could coach me. I really wanted a woman of color or a Latina. And here's what I would say. If you have any desire like to get help with your either your business or your health or like whatever kind of coach you're considering working with or even thinking about going down that path, I want you to just be willing to explore your options get on the phone. Like the minute I got on the phone with a coach, literally, I remember this like it was yesterday. I was like, oh, this whole time, this is what they do. I was like, this is amazing. Like, how come I didn't know this? Like I created all these thoughts about what coaches do. And when I got on the phone, I was like, oh my God, they're like literally here to help me. This is amazing. I would think about coaching a little differently. And like, if you desire help, I just would say, get on the phone with some people, start communicating with some people to learn more about it. You don't have to say yes to people that you get on the phone with. You just be like, hey, I don't know what the hell you do. Can you tell me more? Like literally that clearly when I'm just thinking about like the shame and like the feelings that can come up when you're like considering it and to get out of your own head, I got to be honest, like you got to go through that then. A lot of people compare life coach to not even just life coach, but just coaches to like therapists or like experts or like healers or like whatever. And I just want to be clear that, look, everybody doesn't need a life coach. It's not going to work for everybody. Everybody's different. We all learn differently. I love coaching and it works for me because I've exposed myself to this world and I've seen the difference it's made in my life. Right. So I've tried lots of therapists and I still haven't found a good one. So I freaking hired a life coach and I'm like, (laughs) she's the best. And like, that is the kind of support I need in my life. But I had to get there. And now in my life, I'm like, oh, I'm always going to have the support I need in my life and business because I know how valuable it is for me, especially in growing my business and creating the life that I want and be the wife and the mother and the person that I want to be. I think it's so contrary to what we've seen growing up where I think a lot of women our mothers or grandmothers, like they were very independent. They were very self-reliant. And it was like, it was some shame around asking for help. Like it meant you were less than. And I think they also learned how to compartmentalize feelings in a way that they then pass on to us. And it makes it harder for us to acknowledge when we have those thoughts that are not serving us. And when we get into self-sabotaging patterns. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And I think, like I said, like you have to go through those motions and get to a place where you're like, okay, I'm willing to do this really uncomfortable thing and learn more about whatever program or whatever coach that I'm looking into. A hundred percent. I mean, I remember, but I think eventually you will hit a wall where like, if you're even thinking about a coach and you're waiting on it and waiting on it and waiting on it, you will get to the point where you're just so like, I need to know what's happening here. I need to understand why everyone feels like so mentally safe and I don't or like why everyone's business is booming and uh, mine does not like, and again, not everybody needs a coach, but like, if you are interested in it, ding, 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 let that be the sign that you should at least explore it just like anything else in life. Yeah. I love that advice. Okay. 
Let's talk about the flip side. So for folks who are like, I know I want to help people. And I think what I've seen growing up is that a lot of the people that said that became therapists or became social workers and now they fucking hate their jobs because they're helping people, but they're also not making any money. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, how can we serve in a way that's like not sacrificial to our own well-being? Because I think that's the pattern. Like there's this thought amongst our community where if you're helping people, you should not also be financially well off because of it. It's almost like it's one or the other. Yeah. Yeah couple things. One, I want to first start by like life coaching, coaching, business coaching, all the coaching. It's an unregulated field, which is good and bad, right? Like there's some good stuff about that and some bad things about that. And if you have a desire to be a coach, if you know you want to help people and you don't know how, or maybe you do know how, you're just like, I don't exactly know where to start. It's unregulated. So literally you can just call yourself a coach as uncomfortable as that is and just do it. There's also lots of like certifications you can get. I mean, I have a couple certifications, but not specific to life coaching. And that is like, I think a wonderful way to start if you want the education piece. Like I told you earlier, y'all, I've always had a thing with education because I always struggled in school. So a lot of what I teach my clients comes from my own experiences, not only in growing my business, but I was just talking about this in a live actually about being an industry leader. Like I've become a really wonderful coach. The hours I've put into coaching people is a big part of that. But a huge part of that came from the decisions I made in my life before I became a coach. Every time I quit a job that was really safe for me, right? Every time I negotiated my pay, every time I had a tough conversation with my spouse, right? Like those are the things that really build up skill in terms of like these life skills that help me as a coach. So first, I want you to recognize whatever type of coaching you're interested in doing, like your number one job is to start building massive belief in yourself and the skills that you have. Because if you go out there and you try to help people and it's okay if you're not 100% sure, but if you are going out there trying to sell something that doesn't feel 100% authentic to you, that you can't even get behind yourself, it's going to be a very, very uncomfortable road. And I don't want you to go through that road. And it doesn't have to be like that. So for me, I remember when I first came out with my first kind of program that was podcast marketing course, and that felt really good to me at the time because I was 100% sure I could help people get from A to B. If you want a life coaching business as your livelihood, right, like you want to make money in your business, it really starts with some really basic fundamentals of selling, which I don't know if I should go into right now or if you want to ask me about it later. Yeah, we can talk about it. Growing your business as a high, and I'm going to say high ticket life coaching. What I wish I would have known in the beginning was the power of one-on-one coaching. That was very uncomfortable for me when I started. So much so that I didn't start with it. I started with the course, which I'm not saying it's the right way or the only way. There's so many benefits to it as a coach because it helps you. So let me go into that a little bit. I started my business with a course, then a group program. Then I decided to go back to one-on-one and really go heavy on -on one-on-one because I had the goal of just being a really, really, really good coach. And I also wanted to create my own, this was important to me, my own process for my clients. In the past, I did a lot of the time was I would go into group programs or go into different programs that I had paid into. And my brain was so, was looking at these programs like my program should look like theirs. And I would be fighting with myself because I would create a program and then I was like, don't copy theirs, don't copy theirs, don't copy theirs. But I also felt like theirs was the right way. And when you have these beliefs that like my program should look like that and you struggle with that, then you're not going to show up in your program 100% you. Like that's just the truth. So a big part of why I decided to, it almost felt like a taking a step back, right? Like I did a course, then I did a group program, and then I really decided to 100% close those offers and start with one-on-one coaching was purely because I, one, I wanted to become a really great coach. 
I wanted to help people get results. And I wanted to understand how I help them create results in my mm. own way. Because I don't want to sell something that looks like anybody else's. I want it yeah. to be mine. Yeah. So that is what kind of transformed my business when I decided to like, I want to create something that doesn't look like anybody else's except mine and that nobody else can teach because I've done the legwork of it. Mm, I love that you were able to like let your ego not be the thing that continues to drive your business and just really reconnect with the why. That's what I feel Mm -hmm. like it sounds like you did. And just a really important thing, starting by doing the one-on-one route, I think it makes so much sense because you want to see like, who are you attracting? Do they have something in common? Are the issues that they're talking about something that are relatively similar, right? Because then not only do you understand who you're attracting with your marketing, but then when you get to a place where you've done enough one-on-one, you know exactly what type of group format program to start because you've done all the fucking research. Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. And that's why for new coaches, I would 100% recommend get good, get good at learning how to sell one-on-one Unless you're very confident in doing that on your own, I would 100% hire like a business coach or get into some type of business program that helps you and teaches you that. But learning how to sell one-on-one coaching, working with people one-on-one, holding space for people one-on-one will help you develop your own processes. It's exactly what I did. I spent a whole year doing one-on-one when literally after my first 100K, my brain was like, it's time for group. It's time for group. Do the group. And I I was in my own mastermind that I was a part of and I got coached really hard on it. I hated the coaching, but it was the best thing for me. And they were like, based on a whole bunch of things that I was telling them, you should really continue with one-on-one for the rest of the year. And I was like literally pissed because I was like, no, this is not my fucking plan, y'all. But what it turned into is the last second 100K, right? In making that money, my own beliefs about myself as a coach grew tremendously. And I started to realize how different I was as a coach versus everyone else, which is such a huge thing, right? Like in the beginning of your business, it's a lot of comparison. I mean, even now, but like in the beginning, it's really a lot of comparison and you just don't feel like what you have to say is special, what you have to say is unique. And when you build that type of confidence in yourself, that what you have to say is unique, it doesn't sound like anyone else. The people that want to work with you only want to work with you. It just helps you create your next level of business so much more seamlessly. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. And I think when you get to your first 100K in business, you're still working through the beliefs that like this shit didn't happen by accident. You're just like, there's no fucking way that I'm going to be able to do this again. But then giving yourself that room to really prove yourself wrong and be like, oh, wow. So it's not a fluke. This is actually a thing. And I think that's really important psychologically to boost that confidence. A hundred percent. And this is like literally what I coach my clients on because we all think like, but when you haven't hit a hundred K in your business, you think you're going to feel like you're going to be so special when you hit six (laughs) figures or multiple six figures. Like then you'll be a real coach and then you'll be like, there's a real person. And like, that is such bullshit. Like, no, get there. Like, get there and then tell me how you feel. But in terms of who you think you will become, this is so relevant. I'm just writing a post about this right now. But like what you think you'll become at six figures or multiple six figures, you 100% will not become that in your mind unless you decide to. Like you decide Mm. you are a leader in your niche. You decide that what you have to say is unique and special. That is something that you have to develop in your mind. Like Janice gets this all the time myself too. Like when people come at us and they're like, thank you so much. You changed my life. La 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 la. I'm still like, what? How? Como? (laughs) I'm like, like, it's so weird. But the honest truth is, is you have to decide to look at yourself that way. Because I could tell Janice everything in the world, which I really can sincerely (laughs) because I love her. But the honest truth is it doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what anyone thinks. Janice has to believe that, right? And same with me. The wonderful things my clients say, does it matter? Because I have to build that belief in myself to become the leader I want to be. Yeah, it is so damn true, y'all. And I can 100% 
co-signed the idea that hitting six figures does not fucking change your mind. In fact, I started panicking. Yeah. Because I'm just like, there's no way I can do this again. There's absolutely no way. And it's still a process. I've spent a lot of this year trying to separate my financial success from my identity Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. not trying to attach myself to like, I must do this amount of sales every month, or I must exceed my sales every month, or somehow that makes me like less than. It's so fucking terrible. I hate it so much. (laughs) Is this what our mind does though? I mean, I get a lot of support on these kind of things in my masterminds and my coaching because different levels that you hit in your business will bring up new traumas, bring up new realizations, all of it. I mean, for me, I remember there was something about 50K that made me feel really uncomfortable in my business. And then also 200K, like six figures was kind of exciting and I celebrated. But when I hit 200K, I literally needed to sit with that for like three weeks before I allowed to, before I told anyone, before I even celebrated it. Like I was just like, who is she? Like, what is going on? This doesn't make sense. Like, I I mean, it does, but it, why do I feel this way? Right? Like there's a lot of unpacking. And I mean, it took me probably like four months to fully develop that, like the confidence of like, oh yeah, I'm a fucking multiple six figure coach. That's who I am. Like, I don't have to worry about making money in my business. It's just what I do. It's who I am. Like the belief is there now, but it took me months to build that. Like you checked with me just a couple months ago, I was probably telling you a different story (laughs) because I, my belief wasn't there. So anyways, yeah. Yeah. The struggle is real y'all. Okay. One of the things that I think scares the shit out of anybody, but especially new business owners, new coaches who are ready to like start making money is the idea of coming off sleazy or scammy in their marketing and sales? And like, how do you ask for money in a way that doesn't make you feel gross? (laughs) Yeah. Let's talk about money. I actually love this conversation because I used to be filled with these thoughts a lot. And this is a lot of the work I help my clients with. So first of all, I sell high ticket coaching and I teach a lot of my clients sell high ticket coaching. Can you define what high ticket is for folks that don't know? Yeah. So Every coach will have their own definition of it. I think high ticket is anything probably over $2,000, maybe even, I would say over $1,000 personally. Some coaches will say over like $5,000 or something like that, but like $1,000 is a lot of money. Okay. Let's just be very, very real here. So I think about it like that, right? If you're charging like thousand bucks for your services, 1500 bucks for your services, it's a lot of money. That is where I recommend a lot of people start, by the way, when, when I say that. But it's still, it's a lot of money to sell as a new coach. So that's what I would define. That being said, my clients sell a variety of things. So that's not the only thing I support. But when we talk about what you were just saying, when we talk about like, okay, you're a coach, you're going out there, you're selling this offer. Let's say you have a three-month package or a six-month package for $3,000 that you're selling. and it feels icky. It can feel icky. And you're like, I want to help people, but I don't want to feel scammy. Like I don't want them to think like I'm trying to take their money and like I'm not even going to help them. I don't want to tell people how much I charge before I get on a call with them, like all these things. And here's what I want to tell you, like from a marketing standpoint, I always, always, always will recommend that my clients, like you have to do what feels authentic to you. Some people share their prices on their website. Some people don't. I don't think I did for a long time. I think I just said like this investment is four figures or five figures or whatever. That's what I used to say in like my applications and stuff. Every coach is going to tell you something different, but this is your business. Like this is your business. And if it is your business, you have to learn what feels in integrity with you. That is the most important piece. I could give you my tricks, fine. But if they don't fucking feel good to you, then who cares? Then don't use them, right? So like from a marketing standpoint, you have to implement like things that feel, and I say feel lightly because I coach myself, I coach my clients on like a lot of their thoughts and feelings and stuff. But you have to be in integrity with yourself and your business. That's like number one. Number two is you really have to clean up your thoughts about coaching, period. What are you 
believing about the coaching industry. Because if you think coaching scammy, if you think coaching is this or that or whatever your thoughts are about the industry as a total, well, you're going to have to clean that shit up if you're trying to be a freaking coach, okay? (laughs) You really are. Like you really, really are, which I get because I've been there. Like, trust me, I've invested a lot in coaching and I know the feeling of feeling like I was either like I spent this money and I didn't get what I wanted. I invested in a program that I thought didn't work or whatever. But knowing what I know now, I really believe, I can't say every program, but I really believe a majority of programs work. Mm Mm-hmm. They fucking work. Yeah. You know why they work? They work because you decide to make it work. Mm. Mm-hmm. Like that is the truth about what I know in all the coaching programs that I've invested to, invested in myself, and that I've seen with my client. Like the reason I like I remember investing in a program, like one of my, the first programs I invested in was two thousand dollars. And I remember investing in it. I got like no results really out of it. I went through maybe 60% of it. And I remember having thoughts of like, it didn't work. It didn't work. And the honest truth was I wasn't fucking ready to make it work because all Mm. of it fucking works, right? Like every program, at least in my network of people, like all the programs can look different. All of them can feel different. You have to be committed to making it work. And that's what makes it work. So you mean to tell me that we actually have to do the work? (laughs) Is that what you're saying? That is what I'm saying. (laughs) You just snatched everybody's scalp. And I think that's the shit that we don't want to hear. That it's like, if you haven't gotten the fucking results in your life, honey, I understand there are systemic barriers. There are social constructs. There is racism and sexism and all the shit. But what you're doing plays a big fucking part and also what you're not doing to get to where you want to be will yeah. play an equal part. Yeah. And here's the thing. You have to be willing to be in a journey to get wherever you want to go. If you want to have a thriving coaching business, money coaching business, life coaching business, whatever, like you have to decide that that's where you're going. And everything that gets you there is just a part of the process, including investments that maybe you felt wasn't the best investment. I made so many investments. (laughs) I still, last year, I bought some things at the end of the year trying to spend my business money. (laughs) And I was like, why the hell did I buy that? But here's the thing. I own my shit. We have to own our decisions and be willing to make decisions that if it doesn't work out or if you didn't get whatever you wanted, like you just got to handle the situation. And maybe that means you talking to the coach and being like, Hey, I didn't like this. Da, 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 da. And whatever the case is, I just believe that like you have to clean up your thoughts about the coaching industry, because if you believe it's scammy, then like, it's going to be really hard for you to go out there and sell authentically, like really, mm. really hard. Like, and one more thing, actually. Yeah. Lastly, I want to add one thing. And I've talked about this a lot of times. I know you, we've had conversations about it, but your belief in the people that you're selling to mm. is so important, especially people, which I think is your entire audience and mine too. Like the people who want to get into coaching, who are liking what we do, it's very likely that you care a lot about your community. It's very likely that you want to help people like your cousins, like your mom, like your dad like your friends, right? Like it's very, it's common that like you just care deeply about your community. And what I see often that's holding people back, especially in coaching, is that they will come up with these beliefs in their mind that their people can't afford coaching or can't afford my $3,000 offer. And I want to tell you something. First, your thoughts about the people who are going to buy from you as a coach Your beliefs should be high of them. Like your job as a coach is to believe that like they aren't their circumstance right now. Like Janice, like if someone has a coaching call with Janice, they're like, oh, and I lost my job and I did it and look, poor me. Like she's going to be like, oh, I'm sorry. That really, really sucks. Like I can totally empathize. But are you ready to put your shoes back on and roll your sleeves up and like make things happen? Because that's the truth. And 
one thing I've trained my brain to believe, and I've seen it, like now I have all the evidence in the world, is that the people that you want to serve, they aren't people you have to pity. They're not people you have to like be like, oh, I feel so bad. I feel so bad. Like the world, society does enough of that. You as a coach are there to help them see what feels impossible for them. You're there. Like Janice is such an example of this just with her story. And she shares like luckily, like we are so lucky that Janice shares her transparent journey with us, sharing like how much money she's created, sharing the expense, like you share everything, right? The fact that she is sharing this with us helps us actually see what's possible. Like if you fast forward to four years ago, I forget when actually, but you talk about, did you get fired from a job? Or Yes, that was back yeah. in 2014, right around yeah. when I started my blog. Yeah, exactly. So like if we fast forward to that moment and imagine if she wanted to work with a coach at that moment and they were like, oh, poor Janice, she's really not, she really can't afford this. I, I won't <laughs> sell it to her. You have to see your clients the way where they want to be. Yeah. Not where they are now. And in that moment where I was unemployed was when I started investing in my business. So it's like, who says that that's not the right time for a person? That could be the exact moment that they need that support because mm -hmm. they are ready for the transition. Exactly. And what I tell myself often, especially y'all, because I went from 6K prices to 10K prices and that shit was real uncomfortable. For me. <laughs> like I had a lot of thoughts about myself. I had a lot of thoughts about my programs. I was like, this is not right. Like literally my brain filled myself with these thoughts of how it's not right. But then I asked myself, wait, wait, how do you invest, Kat? And I invested in a 20, which I know is a lot of money and a lot of people will think it's crazy. And I'm not telling you, you need to do this. But like the investment I made in my mastermind is $25,000, which I remember when I first made that payment, it was incredibly powerful to me. It was like the test of self-trust. And it was a powerful moment for me. When I raised my prices to 10K, I asked myself, like, how come I'm allowing myself to make these really hard decisions and to trust myself at this level? But I have beliefs about my people that they're like, what are they not worthy of making those decisions? What are they like? Oh, why wouldn't I offer them this opportunity that I had to make of making a really hard decision? Like Janice invested in her business when she lost her job or she invested in her blog and like everything when she lost her job. Give your people that opportunity and stop judging them for where they are in their life and stop telling yourself that they're struggling or that they're whatever. Like just because someone is struggling, just because someone's at the beginning doesn't mean they're not worthy of the transformation. Mm, mm, that is a whole word right there, y'all. I'm glad that you talk about the fact that you as a coach also invest in coaching, right? Because it's just like, it's a secular type of situation that I feel like we find ourselves as we continue to level up, we realize the areas where we need support and we seek that support. And I think one big game changer for me that I've talked a little bit about was I knew that this year I wanted to write a book proposal. And I also knew that there was no fucking way that I was going to do it alone because I just had so many thoughts around my worthiness of doing this project. And I needed somebody to endorse the idea that I was actually capable and I needed to do this and someone externally believing in me was the only way that I could see this potentially happening. And so wow. that was a decision I made at the end of last year. I said, I'm going to invest in a book proposal coach. Yes, there is a coach for everything, y'all. And it was a $12,000 investment. And yeah. I know that if I did not put that money down and I did not say I am betting on my fucking dreams with this investment, that I would not be in a place where now I have a finished book proposal. Now I have a signed literary agent and she's literally shopping the proposal to publishing houses while I go on vacation next week. Okay. So yes. I know for a fucking fact that this would not be my reality if I had not said I am going balls to the wall on this dream because I deserve to do this. I'm worthy of this dream. And we need to get really like, what's the word? We just need to 
not be fucking scared to like plant the flag and say, I need this version of my life to exist and I'm going to do what I need to do to make it happen. A hundred percent. That's when you have decided like, okay, I'm committing to this. Do I know if I'm ready? No, I don't fucking know if I'm fucking ready. Are you kidding me? We don't know when we're right. Like I remember when I did that mastermind investment, I was like, are you really like, it was like a conversation in the mirror. And it was like, you ready, Kat? You really ready at this level? Like you want to do this? And was I a hundred percent sure? No, but I was trusting that like, look, I got myself here. I'm willing to try this. And if this is the worst investment I have ever made and it doesn't work out, I'm going to take a hundred percent responsibility and it is what it is. And I'm just going to handle it. Yeah. That's what I do. That's it. Right? That's all you but can do. You have to get to that. Like, and this is why I say everybody's got to get to their point. Right? Like, I, and I'm going to say this because I really believe in your programs. Like if you are sitting here waiting and watching Janice talk about another program that you've been wanting to invest in and you're just like, hmm, maybe this time, hmm, maybe that time, it starts with a effing decision. And that's the beginning decision because once you start making those decisions, those decisions don't end. Like, And we're talking about coaching, but there's a lot of other ways in your business as a business entrepreneurs and coaches, there's a lot of other ways you're investing in your business and yourself that costs a lot of money. It's not just the coaching, it's the hires, it's the freaking support. It's like a whole bunch of ways. So like that tax bill is no joke. (laughs) Yeah. These decisions of really just learning how to stand behind yourself to make really hard, scary decisions that probably no one in your family understands. They don't have to. This is your life and this is you. I think I remember telling my husband, (laughs) let me tell you something too. I want to say one more thing. When I made this $25,000 investment in my mastermind, I had it in my business cash, right? But we were also saving for a house. Let me tell. And this was a big lesson for me in my business (laughs) because my stupid ass told my husband about this mastermind. And he's like, "Uh, (laughs) you're what? (laughs) And I was like, yeah, I'm doing it. And now I know better. I'm like, my business is my business. You don't need to know. (laughs) But y'all, like I was saving for a house. That 25K could have gone to something much more practical on paper, right? Like everyone in my life, $25,000, that's like literally quarter hundred K, like just put it in the house money. And I was like, no, because I'm going to double this money. And I actually did. So yeah. I, 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 uh, I got 100K when I made that investment. So that's the thing is you have to be ready to make these decisions for yourself and really commit. And like, I will never ask someone to invest in me investment types that I haven't been willing to do myself mm. ever. Like, I don't think, yeah, like I would never, never, never. Yeah. Kat, I fucking love you. I love everything that you do. And I want you to leave anybody who is listening to this episode with the desire to become a coach. What are one to two actionable steps they can take today to start creating that reality? Yeah. Okay. I want you to listen to me very careful right now. Not Janice. She knows how to make money. <laughs> like you, you listening to this, if you are a coach and you're like, either you've made no money and you want to start, or even if you're like, making a $1,000 a month, maybe like signing a client here to there, whatever, but you really want this to work. You really want to grow your business. Here's what I want to tell you. It's very basic. And you've probably heard, heard a thousand coaches say the same thing, but I'm going to try to say it as basic as possible because this is all you have to do all your, all the way to six figures. I'm not kidding you. This exact advice will get you to six figures. I want you to go out there Well, actually, number one is I want you to start calling yourself a coach. 100% start calling yourself a coach. I want you to create more opportunities to call yourself a coach. Some of you, that's going to mean going to conferences and telling people, I am a health coach. This is what I do. Some of you, that's going to be going on Instagram lives and introducing yourself as a coach over and over and over again. Because step one is you need to take on that identity as a coach right now. I also want you to start looking around. Everywhere you go, in your office, online, social media, I want you to start imagining that anybody could be your client. Now, this is a little silly. Sounds a little silly, but hear me out. I want you to start imagining like they could be my client. They could be my client. I bet you. I I bet you I could help her. I bet you I could help this person. I bet you I could help this person. What that does to your mind 
is it makes you the coach. It makes you the coach in your mind. So step one, take on that identity. Step two, I want you to go out there and meet a whole bunch of people, create community, get in programs that you're interested in, like get yourself out there to meet people, tell people you're a coach. Then I want you to like just share your value with the world. You're helping people get results before they even work with you. If you listen to all of my podcasts, you can make a whole lot of money. If you listen to all of Janice's episode, you can make a whole lot of money. Like there's Yo, a I lot. Have, I have receipts to show exactly yeah, that. Exactly. Yo, like people who literally have not paid me a dollar, fucking follow me on social, listen to the podcast, <laughs> become debt-free, start a business, quit their job, all the things. Yeah. And let me tell you something. It's not, it's not a coincidence that you and I give so much value in our work People could do the work for free. I now, as a coach, you listening to this, I want you to do that. Go out there and help people for free, Mm. either via content or any avenue you would like. Create that community, give value for free. And the number one most important thing in the world, this is the part you're going to be a little comfortable, but you have to offer to help people. I mean, don't do it awkwardly, okay? This is not like, I don't want you to go up to everybody and say, I can help you. I have a one on a coach. Let this me is not help what I'm you. saying. But you do have to finish it off by like, hey, I'm a coach. So if you know anyone who ever needs help, I'm the person for you. Just hit me up. Like it could be that simple. The way I explain it to my clients, if you are going out there and creating content, but you're not offering to help them, it's like talking about a party that you're throwing and then not inviting the person. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's messed up. Like, make sure you're just like, hey, 100% I can help you if you're looking to get healthy or 100% I can help you if you want to start a side hustle or if you want to make money in your coaching business, 100% I can help you. Just hit me up if you need anything. If you do that over and over and over again, you could literally make six figures. I mean, I know plenty of my side hustle group coaching students who started with me, were introduced to the idea of entrepreneurship, and then began working with you one-on-one who have created a lot tens of, of thousands of dollars in their businesses just by keeping shit hella simple and yeah. showing up, offering value, and fucking helping people. Yes. And it's amazing to see. And I also want to mention, like, I really believe that the program that you've created, your side hustle, one, everybody should really, like, if you are even slightly considering a side hustle, especially for the price of that program and access, like, I had clients that were in mine who ended up being in it because they're like, well, to have access to Janice for this price, like, of course I'll do the side hustle program. Like, there's so much to learn about yourself in the journey of your, not even just that program, because even your blog program, like in your program, like not only to have access to you, but also to have, to have like access to all this information that can help them like decide which direction to go. Cause there's a lot of ways you can make money y'all. We're talking about coaching today, obviously, but like, I don't know if anybody has not been a part of your programs and like they've debated it. I just feel like I'm just such a fan of them. Thank you. And let me, can I end this? I know, wait, let me just end it with saying something about you and make you cry. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I hate you. <laughs> let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about Janice. And this is me to you. I love you. I'm so grateful for you. And my business would not be where it's at without you and your support and your generosity. And you are a woman who brings up women with you. And that's who you are. I could cry thinking about it because I'm so grateful for you. But ever since the beginning of my business, like you put me on your show when I was making no money and you saw something in me that was like worthy and special of being on your show. And you have kept me in in close proximity to you on purpose. And it's just such a reflection of the woman that you are. And I don't know. I've just never, I'm just so grateful for the impact that I know the impact you've had on many people's lives, like in your community, everybody listening to this, my clients, your clients, like our clients, right? I know that impact, but you've had an impact on people. I mean, on myself so much. And I'm just so grateful for you. And for everyone listening, like she's the same person here as she is on the phone. (laughs) (laughs) And she, like, it's the same Janice across the board. And we're just so lucky to have a Latina who's paving such a way 
in the most transparent way, who literally loves her community, who is making really hard decisions from, in her business to be able to not only continue your business, but also like create a life that you want, right? Like, I'm glad that you're like making moves and changes in your business because I feel like you really deserve to create a life where you don't have to be the face all the time because that's a lot of work. And I just want to thank you. And I love you. <laughs> I love I you. It. Oh my gosh, Kat. Thank you so much. Honestly, like I consider myself to be a very like, I guess they call it an empath where you like, you just pick yeah. up energies, right? I'm the same way. Yeah. I'm an empath. And too. like when you find a genuinely good human, like it's a rare thing and mm -hmm. you are one of those humans to me, like you just... There's like an uplifting energy aura that comes when I'm in your presence. And it's so valuable to me, especially because I don't have entrepreneurs in my local proximity. I don't have people that I can go and have coffee with and be like, you know what? As much as I love this, today fucking sucked. This was yeah. terrible. Yeah. And just having that ability to have community when we are doing so many things that are just so new mm -hmm. to our community is so important. And you coach me through your podcast. You coach me when we have our events together. You coach me when we have our little like mastermind groups and we just get on the phone and talk. And I am so grateful for the work that you do. I am so grateful for the fact that you exist. And I'm so grateful that you're giving so many women in our community the tools that they need to transform their lives, not just like their businesses, but truly their lives. Like I've seen people become more elevated versions of themselves just by working with you. And so it's just, it's so fucking inspiring to watch. And I know that people are going to be inspired by this episode. So for folks that want to work with you, tell us what's the best way. Yeah. So right now, one-on-one -on -one is officially closed. So the best way to work with me is through my upcoming mastermind. It's called Show Up and Lead. You can find out more on my website, katdelcarmen.com, or follow me on Instagram. That's where I hang out the most, katdelcarmen. And definitely, if you really want to know more about me and my type of coaching, my concepts, all of that, go to Latinas Booked Out Podcast. You could find out more. I'm an OG podcaster like Janice. Like we both, we found each other when we were just podcasting. <laughs> we didn't have like the programs and stuff yet, but that's the best way to find me. And okay, one more thing I know we're taking forever here. <laughs> I just want you guys to see like the amount of love that Janice and I have for each other and comparing yourself to people, to other either Latinos, Latinas, whatever person of color you are, whatever, whatever in your industry, in your niche, whatever, I promise you, if you decide to create community over comparison, it will benefit you so much more. You will find your people quicker. Uh, you will build relationships that you are so grateful for. And I want you to see that like, you can have community and there doesn't have to be comparison. We have so much deep respect for each other. And that's available to everybody if you decide that way. And we've never met in person. Oh, my yet. God. I can't even believe <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Hey, I feel like I've I feel like I've already felt your hug before. No, absolutely. Like tr we transcend the it? physical connection because it's, it's so really, crazy. It is I'm so like, crazy. You're not even gonna be ready when I hug you for the first time. I'm gonna like put you on the floor. I'm gonna be like, oh my god, I can't wait. I cannot <laughs> fucking wait. And one thing that I am looking forward to as we continue to wind down from the fucking shit show that has been the past two years in this pandemic is yeah. live events. Okay, like I want live events like money fiesta okay and i we need you in. there like you already know we, you know everybody is waiting for a live event from you i by know the way. i also need to like <laughs> fucking mentally psych myself up because i'm an ambivert I will you up. for sure You're i need to like team. take naps lots of naps <laughs> yeah. we'll take naps and be alone when other people are speaking <laughs> yes but everybody's have, like, like the little pod the little <laughs> sensory deprivation pod <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's waiting for a live event from you. I'm not even kidding. Oh We're my just, god, like, tapping our fingers like, uh, yeah, all right, yeah. fine. No pressure though. No pressure. It's not yeah. like you don't have <laughs> other shit you're working on. <laughs> I know. One thing at a time. 
Ay, Dios mío, Kat. I love you so much. Thank you so much for this conversation. And for y'all, like, please go and follow this woman. She is going to teach you so much shit for free that I can only imagine what it's like to work with you in person. All I know is that success story after success story after success story. Like, there's a lot of coaches out here. They ain't got no receipts. She's not one of those. She's got a whole fucking (laughs) bibliography of people that I personally know that have been able to create amazing things just by working with you. So, so thank you for what you do and keep on killing it, girlfriend. Good luck with your group program. I know it's going to be amazing. Thank you. Love you. Appreciate <laughs> Love you. you queen. <laughs> Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you are ready to take your dinero to the next level, sign up for our free 14 page guide, the financially lit Latina the ultimate blueprint for becoming poderosa with your dinero. This 14-page guide includes our best tips on money mindset, budgeting, debt repayment, career, investing, financial independence, side hustles, and more. And you can get it completely free. So to get your copy of the Financially Lit Latina, just head over to yoquierodineropodcast.com slash start. That's yoquierodineropodcast.com slash start and start transforming your dinero story today. Until next time, stay empowered, stay inspired, and stay poderosa. On the Yo Quiero Dinero podcast and associated entities, all information provided is for general information purposes only and does not constitute accounting, legal, tax, or other professional advice. Listeners should not act upon the content or information found here without first seeking appropriate advice from an accountant, financial planner, lawyer, or other professional. We assume no responsibility for information contained on this podcast and associated entities and disclaim all liability with respect to such information, including but not limited to any liability for errors, inaccuracies, omissions or misleading or defamatory statements. Usage of this podcast and associated contents constitutes an explicit understanding and acceptance of the terms of this disclaimer.